everybody, what's happening? You got Will and Gage here, and we're here with Dan Bunting, the multiplayer director of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Um, we had a chance to play Black Ops 3 multiplayer yesterday. Yeah, um, we, it was very, very good. I, yeah. I gotta say, I definitely, the first thing I noticed is it's smoother. Uh -huh. it, it just, it seems more polished to me. Yeah, the, the uh, do you want me to hold this? Or no. do you want, okay. <laughs> yeah, going after the fluidity was really an important goal for us. We wanted to make sure the players felt like they could just fluidly move through the environment seamlessly, uh, be able to chain all of their movements together. All of the things that would stop you or slow down your gameplay in previous games, we wanted to remove those barriers and make it feel like you could constantly stay connected to the environment and master your interactions with the environment to your benefit. So, you know, we talked about kind of using the environment as a tool. And um, so the entire movement system for, the, for this game was built off of those principles in mind. Um, and we also wanted to sit, keep you engaged in the fight through everything. So we had a philosophy of guns up, guns up in all things. And um, you're a cool tagline. Yeah, I mean, you do, you stay guns up, you keep your gun in the fight if you're going to be mantling, where previously uh, when you mantled over a piece of cover or an obstacle or through a window, the gun would be taken away in previous games. This is the uh, first time we keep the gun up all the time. Um, you can slide, uh, you, we have a thing called a power slide, if you power slide, um, you can turn around while you're in the middle of the movement, keep your gun up, and uh, you just feel like this awesome action hero. Yeah, I was experiencing that a little bit. I know, Gage, we, we were messing around with that as well. I power but. slid into the other team. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, it was fantastic. You have to be careful. Yeah. The Black Ops games are always a, a safe purchase as well, because it's like you get the campaign, you get the multiplayer, and you get zombies. It's like buying three games in one. I mean, it, it's always a good thing. But uh, the multiplayer specifically, what did you set out to do to make it different from previous installments? The movement was one of the first things we set out to do, um, and that was really just, you know, evolving from Black Ops 2. I think that, uh, you know, a lot of players see the uh, the movement system or they hear about it, and they don't fully understand it until they get their hands on the controller, that it is it is going to feel very familiar in a good way to what they know and love from Black Ops 2. It's also going to feel very new and better and much more improved and um, giving them a sense of power and control. Um, so the movement system was a really big uh, change to the game that we brought for the first time um, at the beginning of the project. Um, we've also brought the, a new system called the Specialists, and yeah. Specialists are um, each of the specials is a, is a unique, unique character. We're going to have nine of them in the game. Each of those characters has their own voice and personality. They have their own backstory um, that comes out of the, the universe of the game's fiction. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time building out the game universe and uh, just create a lot of really uh, awesome opportunities for us to be creative with uh, each of these characters. Um, and the characters are going to have their own a unique weapon and ability. And you're going to choose one or the other before you go into a match, and you're going to stick with that character throughout the, the course of the match. Um, the weapons, you know, are going to appeal to players who really want to get those spikes of power, those moments of, of uh, just raw lethality um, for a moment in time. And, you know, it might happen two times in a match, it might happen three times in a match, depending on, you know, your performance and what kind of game mode you're playing. Um, and then the abilities are really tactical in nature. They're meant to reinforce the core gameplay that you're going to have through classes that you build. Um, so it gives players a, a really difficult choice, which we like to do, we like to give players meaningful choices to make about their gameplay. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot that um, fans are going to, they're going to start to kind of gravitate towards one, uh, one specialist or another because it's uh, either they like the look of it, they like the character, the personality, or it really supports just what the kind of play, that, the gameplay style that they like to play. Uh, when you set out, to, I know obviously competitive uh, gaming is, is you know very very popular, even more popular with esports, those kinds of things. Did you, when you're designing a game um, with the multiplayer aspect, did you ha did you do anything that with that in mind, knowing that this is going to be a huge tournament type of, of a game that's going to be out there? We are always thinking about esports and competitive play. Um, if you remember Black Ops 2, we did a lot of um, really big new features for, to support the esports uh, community. Uh, we had Codcaster, which was entirely about uh, esports because Codcaster is a feature that was really only there for the broadcasters because you want to be able to spectate. The game is. Um, you know, the game has to be both fun to play, has to be highly competitive for an esports community, but it has to be fun to watch. That's that's the most important component of um, a successful esports agenda is to make sure that the game is fun to watch. Um, because without the audience, you're not going to have any any esports at all. So um, we're always thinking about that. Um, we you know we design our game with to be competitive and very balanced just by its nature. Whether you're playing socially with your friends in public playlists or whether you're playing uh, in a highly competitive arena like a league. Um, so we're always thinking about all ways to play the game, and uh, you know we're not really 
We're not ready to talk yet about the entirety of what we're doing for esports this game, <laughs> but uh, you know, I can I can guarantee you that you know we're the we're the team that brought you uh, Codcaster. We brought the world the Call of Duty World Championship uh, tournament for the first time with Black Ops 2. So I can guarantee you we're going to go big with it this time too. Excellent. Excellent. Gage. Now, with the new movement mechanics, which I had to, I took a little bit of time to get used to. I played similar games that had similar mechanics. How has that shaped level design for the multiplayer? Um, so it, it uh, you know, really it changes how you build your maps because the, the, the core combat, the movement, and the maps are all uh, very closely connected to one another. It's a, it's, it's an, it's a system um, where you change one thing, it's going to have an effect on the other thing. So um, the maps are all designed um, from the beginning with the movement system in mind. And um, you know, we, the, the benefit of having a three-year development cycle means that we got to make a lot of mistakes early in the first year, which is good. You know, you have the time to learn and adapt and, and kind of recover and um, figure out how to support the, the style of play that you have with this game. Um, so, you know, we spent the, f the first year probably entirely on, a, on, I think, three maps total for a year. That's a long time. <laughs> for three maps to spend in a year, um, we sp just did a lot of iteration. We, as the movement system was, was evolving, as it was developing, we were evolving the maps at the same time. Um, and you know all of our core principles about map design that we've developed over the years and learned um, to make the best Call of Duty multiplayer experience that we can. Um, they were all they all stayed intact. So um, you know some of the core the core things that we do um, from a Treyarch side is we always build our maps around a, a, a three ma three lane structure for the most part. Right. You know you have a lot of interconnected paths that, that, that connect those those three lane uh, three lanes together. But it's the 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 foundation of each map is built around um, three primary paths. Um, and that stayed in place. Um, you know, we have a philosophy about combat, about keeping the combat in frame. Um, we, we really like to push players into head-to-head -head engagements because that's that's um, the most satisfying competitive experience you can have in Call of Duty is when you're fighting a, another combatant head-to-head. -head. Um, so all of our map design still pushes those head-to-head -head engagements. Um, but at the same time, we we want to make sure that we're um, balancing risk versus reward. So with all these movement mechanics. You know, in, in the early days, we were, you know, you were kind of jumping all over the place, and 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 it, you know, it was crazy. It was kind of uh, chaos in the beginning, um, but players were getting out of frame too much, and so we started, you know, refining the map design and, and the pacing and the flow of the maps, and, and also tuning the movement at the same time, so that we, we still maintain those core principles of uh, pushing the head-to-head -head engagements and keeping the combat in frame. Well, it's really, it was really fun to use for the first time, and it's the room of, of people we were playing in, they, at first everyone's running out like a normal Call of Duty game, they're running, and then eventually they find out, well, I can wall run, or I'm double jumping now, and then everyone's like, okay, now this is a whole different game than the game I was playing three minutes ago. Right. Um, and of course, the inclusion of the specialist categories. I was, I was a robot for the whole time, and I had a machine gun arm. It was great. That, just that, awesome, right? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, and so I just turned that on, and I was like, Prrr! and then everyone was dead <laughs> for the first time. I've, playing Call of Duty. But um, wh I wanted to end on, uh, what is your favorite part of the new Call of Duty or the multiplayer? Uh, it's hard to pick one of you know, the favorites of all the features that we've done. Um, Specialist, in particular, is something that uh, I really love as a feature. Um, you know, we took a big risk with that. It's something that's different, feels different, has a little bit of a different personality for the, for the game. But at the same time, it fits right in and feels like it's a very natural component to it. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of it um, just for purely for gameplay reasons. I think that in, in and how the fiction and the gameplay tie in together. Because these characters um, that we've developed from a narrative standpoint, they all have kind of their own unique personality, their own unique backgrounds, but the gameplay mechanics that they have actually extend the, the feeling and the spirit of that character. And as you play with them, you start to kind of evolve your own play styles depending on which character you're playing to you know almost be an extension of the theme of that character. So. If you're playing Ruin, for example, you're just going to run in guns blazing, and you're going to push head first. You're going to push the combat. You're going to try to push into the opponent's line. Um, if you're playing with a character like Outrider, for example, though it's a much more slower, methodical uh, play, you kind of start to feel like you're hunting enemies. You're really you're going around and you're, mm. and you're trying to. It's more of a. a it's almost a, like a character for a playstyle. Yeah, it is, it, and and I think the characters are going to appeal to different people for different playstyles. Um, but each one's unique, and so that's what's great. Um, which I, you know, I, I'm excited about uh, to see what happens um, with the esports side of things because yeah. if you start to see how um, the decisions about what specials you play actually supports a team makeup where uh, different players are playing in different positions, then you get, you can really start to unleash the potential of what this can can do, and it's uh, it's pretty fun. It's I mean, 
uh, we had a game the other day in uh, development where uh, capture the flag where everybody was kind of playing a different role and they had a different specialist for each role and it just like it felt like such an awesome competitive experience I mean everybody was was playing to that character and playing to that role and it just all came together so well that's awesome uh, that's all my questions will no, I mean, the game looks great. You guys should be really proud of what you're doing. You. You've played Call of Duty before, but this game's looking really polished and super smooth. I think uh, everybody's going to be into this, especially the competitive gaming side of uh, markets, you know, people that are into that. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. We thank really appreciate it. Me. Absolutely. Keep it here on Press Start TV.